this video, I'll break down four music video effects for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, some of these effects are going to require plugins, while some of these effects can be created completely for free using just the native effects in Final Cut. The first effect I want to go over is this really cool flicker freeze frame effect. So you can see here are the two clips that I'll be using. Here's clip one and then here is clip number two. So what you want to do is you want to go in between the two clips or just the middle of the two clips or essentially you want to go to the first frame. So you want to make sure you're at the first frame of the second clip. So make sure you're at the first frame and then click on the clip and click on option F. All that's doing is that's freezing the first frame of the second clip. Now we're going to take the clip and we can just trim it down a little bit just so it's not so long. And now let's see what it looks like. As you can see, basically all I did was I froze the first frame. So if I play the video right here, as you can see, see it freezes and then transitions into the second video. So I'm going to do is I'm going to select in this freeze frame. I'm just going to place it on top of the first clip. So the freeze frame is just on top of the first clip. Let's play the video and see what it looks like. As you can see, it just freezes and simple as that. And then it just transitions. All you're doing is basically just introducing the first frame of the second clip. And there you go. It creates a really clean transition. Now we want to add to this and make it look even cooler. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the draw mask, which is basically like just like the pen tool in Photoshop. It basically gives you the ability to cut out a subject or cut out object or whatever you want so here we here to the effects panel and we're going to go to this is cut this natively comes with final cut it's called the draw mask so place it on top of the clip and now you're basically going to cut out the subject so we can go ahead and just do a, like a rough trace around the subject now i'm going to do a very quick rough job just for the sake of the tutorial masking can definitely take a good 15 20 minutes to really get a precise cut but i want to go quickly just for the sake of the tutorial because i don't think you want to sit here for 20 minutes watching me um, mask out the subject as you can see now when I go to the end sometimes what I like to do is I like to zoom out to like 50% to be able to cut around the subject so that's a nice little tip and then we'll just zoom back to fit and then we're going to go through and cut um, around the subject. So what we're going to do is head over here, let's zoom in to like 600%. And what you're going to do is you can see this little icon, this little like circle icon as you can see, and then that's how you connect the dots. So there we go, it's just simple as that, and that's what it looks like. Now a couple of tips that I found to sometimes be helpful is again, like I showed you to, to zoom in, you can let's say zoom into 400%, and let's say you want to click on the mask, and you can just adjust the mask, you could you know, zoom in using this tool, or sometimes I like to find if it's zoomed in to like 400%, and I want to zoom it in a little more I'll actually head over here to the scale and it'll increase the scale and adjust the position. But when you're done cutting out the subject, make sure you head over here and you want to reset the scale and reset the position. So if you adjust the scale and position to make to kind of zoom in to get a more, like more precise cut, make sure when, when you're done cutting out the subject to reset the scale and position, the, the scale and position parameters. Because you want to make sure, for example, if the subject is zoomed in like this, and if I play the video, you want to make sure the, 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 the scale and position parameters are the same. So I play the video, as you can see, that looks just really weird. So you want to make sure the scale and position parameters are the same. So in this case, it would just be 0, 0, and then 100. So those are just a couple tips that I found. Also go over here to shape type, and then when you're done, changing it to B spline can be really nice. It'll help curve out the mask. You could also head over here to feather and adjust the feather. If, he's, if something looks a little bit off, you can go ahead and adjust the fall off. Those are just a couple tips and tricks that just to be just you know to be aware of, and you know, if you want to create you'll have like a really nice precise cut on that's how you create these really cool cutout effects as you can see and then it just goes into the next video so that's just basically what you want to do a simple like cutout there we go but again i want to show you another like a more advanced method a way of doing it but there you go that's how you create a simple like if you see on your instagram reels you see this effect a lot that's how you create that effect but let me show you some really cool ideas to make it look even cooler so i'm going to do them a select the clip and i'm just going to go over here i'm just going to trim the clip i want to have this set at one frame so you can see if you click on the clip it's at 0, 0, 0.01 which means it lasts for one frame now i'm going to do is i'm going to create a copy so hold down command c to copy it and i'm going to go forward one frame paste it go for another frame paste it go for another frame paste it so i basically just created four copies so it kind of flickers on the screen so this is what it looks like a cutout no cutout cutout no cutout cutout no cutout cutout so it's basically just each of these last for one frame and there's a one frame gap in between each of them so as you can see if i play it as you can see it creates a really cool flicker effect now for like all freeze frames what you want to do is you want to select them and make sure they start at the end so make sure they line up so right in between right you want to place it right before the second clip happens and there you go so you can see Right there, we go back one frame and then it's cut out. So you want to make sure you place the freeze frame right in between, right at the end of the first clip and right at the 
beginning of the second clip make sure it lines up and that's basically all you have to do so if we zoom out a little bit and let's play the effect and let's see how it looks like it creates this really cool like as you can see it just looks really nice kind of flickers on the screen and then transitions into the next video now a couple things you could do to make it look even cooler is you could add like a thermal effect i have a whole video breaking down how to use this pack so we go over here we could add like a nice thermal effect onto the actual video itself to kind of get like an inverted effect we could go to all and we could type in um x-ray we could add like a nice x-ray effect on the clip so these are just a couple different ways of doing it to kind of have it create that really cool inverted um effect so let's play the video as you can see this really cool thermal x-ray i think it just looks really cool kind of flickers on the screen has a nice thermal inverted like x-ray effect and there you go that's how you create a really cool like flicker um freeze frame transition in Final Cut. The next effect we're gonna go over is this really cool like streak like overlay transition effect. So you can see this is clip number one and this is so basically this is the first clip. This is the clip that we're using as a transition and then here is clip number two. So what we want to do is we want to select on the first clip. So you're just gonna select on the first clip and you're gonna click on Command R, head down to this drop down arrow, click on custom and basically all we're doing is we're changing the speed to 1000%. So we just increase the speed of this clip to 1000% by simply adjusting the, the speed of the clip. So if you go over here, as you can see, that's what it looks like. It just you basically just sped up the actual um, clip itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this clip, we're going to place it above right here. So we have the first three frames, so one, two, three, and then one, two frames over the second clip. So basically you just have it like kind of overlaying on top of clip number one and clip number two, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, I mean, just that effect looks pretty cool, but we're going to add to it and make it look even better. So what we're going to do is we're gonna select on this clip. We're going to head over here to blend mode. We're going to change it to screen, so change the blend mode to screen, and the opacity to 80% and already you'll see it'll look a lot better so let's play the video and as you can see that already looks a lot better but we're gonna add like a nice directional blur onto the actual like clip itself so head over here to blur let's just minus out and then we're gonna add a directional blur so just place a directional blur on top of the clip itself and we're gonna have it start at 40 uh, the amount start at 40 make sure at the beginning of the clip make sure you press on keyframe the little like you know this di this yellow diamond should light up or the, the, it's basically the keyframe so we'll go over here to the amount and we'll change this amount to like 80 so you can see it, it'll automatically make the diamond yellow which means the amount is being keyframe so if you don't see this yellow icon if it's not working and you don't see this yellow icon pop up or the, the diamond turn like yellow it means you didn't actually keyframe it so go ahead and play and as you can see see we just keyframe the blur it's just a symbol like keyframe blur now let's play the video and as you can see that is just a really cool kind of like double exposure prism effect it's just a really cool clean transition if you don't know if you, if you haven't watched this video you don't know how to create this effect if you watch it for the first time it'll definitely you know catch you off guard a little bit It'll make you wonder how in the world you create that transition there you go really really easy transition completely free cost you absolutely nothing to create a really cool clean transition it takes like two minutes completely free highly encourage you to use this transition in your music videos or any type of video like even like a sports video or whatever it's just a really nice simple transition the next effect i want to go over is this really cool pro mist filter effect so if you can't afford for like an actual promise filter to put on your camera you can just use this really cool plugin and basically what a pro what the effect does is it basically like you know adjust the kind of like or kind of like adjust or like diffuses the highlights which is just the brightest part of the video so if you apply the prism the promise filter on the clip automatically you watch the lights in the top as you can see see they're already a little bit diffused so basically all it's doing is it's diffusing the highlights or which is the brightest part which in most cases would be lights so it's a really cool effect you don't want to just slap this effect on any one of your clips but especially if there are lights as you can see see so it kind of diffuses um the lights it's just a really nice simple effect and instead of going out and buying a promise filter i don't know how much it costs probably it's decently pricey but just go ahead and buy this filter i think it costs like five or six dollars in my store it's super cheap really easy just drag and drop they have a whole bunch of settings as you can see you go to threshold the two settings that i would adjust is go to the threshold so you can see that just makes it brighter so it makes it target more areas so you know as you see we can adjust it a little bit that looks um, a lot better so obviously it's going to target the highest like the the brightest part of the clip but the lower the threshold you bring the darker stuff it, it will start like a 
diffusing kind of like darker highlights, but it's automatically going to select the brightest ones. If you got to lower the threshold, it kind of like quote unquote lowers the expectation. So even though it the, the light, so the, the the brightest the highlights, it'll tar target kind of the kind of like the right little bit below highlights or a little bit below the low the the brightest part of your clip. So if you want to just uh, like just selecting the very brightest part, crank this number all the way up. But if you want to kind of have it look a little bit cooler and kind of select different parts of the video, try adjusting the threshold by bringing it down. You can also head over here to the amount and basically adjust the amount, which is basically just how bright it's actually going to be. And as you can see, there we go. It's a really, that just looks really nice. It's a really nice pro mist, di kind of like diffuser effect. And there we go, simple drag and drop overlay. It costs like four or five dollars. And it's so much better than actually using like a real pro mist filter. So much cheaper and so much easier to use. The last effect I'm gonna go over is this really cool CRT TV effect. Now, obviously this is, won't look as good as using an actual CRT TV effect, but it's a really cool stylistic look. So if we select the clip, I'm gonna just show you a whole bunch of different things that I would encourage you to do. Head over here to the color set section we are going to add a color board we're going to head over here to saturation and we're just going to crank up the saturation so here's before here's after i just think that looks a lot better so simply just we're just going to adjust increase the saturation of the clip now there's a couple other things that i would do is i would go over here and you can like adjust the order of how you want to apply these effects but you can add a nice um fisheye onto the actual clip so you can see it kind of gives that kind of like that lens distortion we'll take the amount and we'll change it to three so as you can see here's before here's after it kind of gives a nice lens distortion because obviously a crt tv isn't like a flat screen so it's going to kind of get a little bit of distortion so that is a nice effect to do if you come with that nice lens distortion effect another effect that i thought looked really good was film grain so what I'm gonna do is head over here to film grain. You could also add like um, um add aged film, or you could add um like a noise effect, kind of like adding noise. But I found film grain looks really good. So apply to realistic grain, and then as you can see, see it kind of like adds grain to the TV or adds grain to the clip. I just think that looks a lot better. So if you play the video, this is what it looks like. It kind of has lens distortion, the saturation is turned up, and it's kind of like a little like you know staticky. I just think that looks. It just kind of creates a nice little static effect. So I just think it's a little you you can apply different effects or you know remove uh remove some of these effects or use the use the exact same ones that I used. I just found those were a couple of effects that I thought looked really nice and just added to the actual overall effect and made it look a little more believable. Now I'm going to head over here to titles and generators and I'm going to go over here to my generators and apply the CRT TV or just kind of place it on top of the clip. Now this is not an effect. This goes in your generators folder in your motions template folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to zoom out. Now basically if you trim the overlay right here if you trimmed it right there so it would fit on top of the clip basically what would happen is you would speed up this animation but if you don't want to adjust the actual speed of the crt tv so you see it's animated if you don't want to adjust the speed what you could do is select in the generator hold on option g and we'll just call this you know tv um overlay so just basically create a compound clip now you can trim the generator without adjusting the speed of the animation so if we go to the end and we'll just trim it by option right bracket now basically now you you're not adjusting the speed so as you see now it maintains the same speed of course you could also bring it like command r and adjust the speed if you want to do that too go over here select the generator head over here to blend mode and change it to overlay so as you can see already you see it kind of creates a nice crt tv um, effect as you see because there's like nice like lines and that just looks really cool you know simple as that now i'm going to head over here and apply in a an adjustment layer this is just a free adjustment layer we're going to place it on top of both the um the generator and the actual clip itself and now we're going to add a really nice transform effect which is basically like the basic 3d effect in premiere pro so head over here to the effects panel and we're going to type in transform now this is not this is not like an individual effect on my store it's included in my freeze frame transition pack i'll put all the images up on screen so you know the exact like the plugins and the effects that I'm using. This is not an individual effect. It's included in a bundle and I'll make sure all the images will be up on screen so you know exactly the ones to use. So we're going to apply the transform effect onto the adjustment layer. So simply apply the transform effect. Now what we can do, so basically what this does is that this plugin allows you to use Apple Motion's parameters in Final Cut. So now we can head over to rotation, head over here to Y and as you can see now you can turn on the Y axis which is something you just couldn't do natively in Final Cut. So we're going to adjust this and we adjust it 
little bit more and then increase the scale actually maybe it's this is probably a little too intense maybe something like negative 13 and adjust this something like this and then we're going to increase the scale so you can see it kind of gives that nice 3d orientation effect i just feel like it just sells the effect a little bit more it looks like you're kind of shooting the tv at the from like the side or something it's just a really nice cool effect to use and there you go that's how you create a really cool or how you simulate a crt tv effect in final cut just using some very basic cheap plugins and you know it's just really easy you literally i think in total i think this effect cost maybe like what like 10 or 12 dollars is super cheap so instead of buying a crt tv you can just simulate again it's not going to look like the same as using a real crt tv effect or using different you know plugins but it's just a really cool stylistic look and i think overall i think it definitely sells it i mean it definitely doesn't look as good as using like a real one but considering it's all done digitally i think it just looks really cool definitely you know let me know what you think down in the description below or maybe a couple other things that i could do to make you know sell it even more but i thought this overall looked pretty good and definitely i'd love to hear your suggestions again you can follow the same steps i used or adjust it add different effects to kind of get your your specific look but i just want to show you a couple of tips and tricks or things that i found to make it look a little more realistic and kind of overall sell the effect now if you're having trouble installing plugins from my digital store i want to just give you a brief overview of how to install plugins in final cut so what you want to do is you want to head over here and click on go so just click on go then scroll down and you want to do is you want to click on home so just select on home then what you want to do is you want to head over here to this folder movies so just double click on the movies folder and as you can see your motions template folder there should be a motions template folder now what you want to do is you want to right click on it so right click and click on get info and then what you want to make sure is that it says motions templates dot localized that is really important so once that is you know make sure that's correct you want to open the folder as you can see here are your generators effects titles and transitions and for each one of these you want to right click and make sure it says get info as you can see effects dot localized so you want to make sure that is correct and then for the case of the crt tv effect which is a generator right click click on get info and then as you can see generators dot localized so you want to make sure that's really important now all my products I make sure to in the description to tell you where to put it so either it'll be a generator an effect a title or a transition so make sure you pay attention to the to the description of the actual product and if you something's confusing or you don't know where to put a certain effect or a transition or, or a generator you'll let me know down in the comments below but for all the descriptions of the products it should tell you where to put it so make sure it's all of these plugins should be in one of these folders which should be in your motions template folder and if something isn't working you want to make sure that like dot localized thing is correct because because if that dot localized thing isn't there or it's incorrect none of my plugins or any none of my plugins are going to work so that is number one also i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm pretty sure all of my plugins only work with a final cut 10.6 or above so you if you have a version of final cut below 10.6 i would highly encourage you to not buy my plugins because i don't think they work in a, in a version lower than 10.6 but i still have some cool overlays that you could still download but i should give you just a quick little brief overview of how to install plugins if you're having a hard time I'm installing plugins from my digital store anyways hopefully you enjoy the video if you enjoy watching these types of videos definitely consider hitting that subscribe button also don't forget to check out my digital store which includes a whole bunch of presets overlays and plugins for final cut pro 10 anyways i will see you in the next one peace